ओके तो आप बता दीजिए प्रशांत जी देन आई विल जस्ट टेक अराउंड 20 25 सेकंड्स uh good afternoon everyone i welcome you all for this wonderful webinar on new paradigm in hematenics drug delivery for better absorption and lesser side effects by dr alok shah he is currently a head of science and technical marketing at generic scientific research and innovation he is a phd in molecular biology from university of iowa post doctorate from rockefeller university conducted extensive research on lung stem cells and cancer he has also been a ex professor at the university of chicago and his uh, papers has been published in top scientific journals such as science cell etc so i welcome you all and i welcome dr alok shah for this wonderful webinar on new paradigm in hematenics drug delivery for better absorption and lesser side effects over to you dr alok thanks so much uh, dineshi and thank you so much fdc for having me here today um that was a very kind introduction i am just going to go to some of the, the salient points real fast i am the head of science and technical marketing at generex pharmacist what we do at generex is we bring in branded and clinically backed products with the latest innovation and the best uh, clinical trials from around the world into india for the first time of course we've got a really good set of products that we brought to india the one i will be talking about is the one that fdc fdc has launched which is called bitcofol hb in terms of my background like dinesh she was saying i've got a phd in molecular and cellular biology uh, done my post doctorate also and i was a professor at the university of chicago my area of focus is lung stem cells and cancer that's what i've done a lot of my research on i've published in the top tier journals science nature and cell but today we're going to talk primarily about iron uh using technology some of the latest innovations and we're going to focus especially on vitcofol hb what it brings to the table why it's different so let's talk about our current issues what are some of the problems available with current forms of iron oral iron that we use of course the biggest problem is the sheer number of side effects the variable bioavailability uh the fact that you've got efficacy that isn't entirely proven or not as efficacious and because of all of this you end up with a lot of decreased patient compliance so in terms of the range of side effects that you often see uh it ranges everything from gastric side effects to vomiting nausea fainting discolored stools uh discolored teeth and this is primarily because of what i am going to do first is right now i'm going to go through the pathway so the canonical mechanism of iron absorption and this is very important to understand so that we can see and we can understand what the current problems are and so that you can understand how vitcofol hb which contains sun active fe which is powered by sun active fe how that's different so traditionally iron when it enters your intestine and this is an intestinal enterocyte it goes through the dmt1 receptor now the dmt1 receptor is rate limiting so not all of the iron is absorbed <clears throat> and it's the iron that is unabsorbed that remains at the luminal side of the intestine that causes all of the side effects that you see so after the iron goes through the dmt1 receptor it will bind to ferritin where it gets stored in the enterocytes at the bottom it comes out through ferroportin which is through the basolateral side the bottom side of the cell and in cases of chronic inflammation often in cases of pregnancy what you find is a protein called hepcidin this is going to be important because we're going to come back to this at the end hepcidin will bind to the ferroportin and it will block the transport of iron from the bottom of the cell so ultimately what normally happens is the iron comes in through dmt1 comes out from the bottom through ferroportin where it then binds to transferrin and you see an increase in hemoglobin of course the two big problems are first of all like i told you dmt1 is rate limiting so not all of the iron will get absorbed giving you side effects the second problem is in cases of pregnancy chronic inflammation or even cases like covid what happens is hepcidin is going to be high that's going to prevent the transport of the iron from the bottom of the cell so you can take all the oral iron you want and your ferritin levels will also go up but none of it comes out in fact it builds up in the cells it becomes toxic to the cells and the cells get shed off <clears throat> so one parameter that i want to make clear through this entire talk that i will be talking about all of my clinical trials primarily will be focusing on hemoglobin itself 
because as clinicians, that's what we finally care about. We don't care so much about ferritin. We don't care so much about transparent saturations. We use all of that when we don't have hemoglobin data, but we have the hemoglobin data. So that's entirely what I will focus on. So like I was telling you, there's a range of side effects ranging from, of course, GI distress, stomach upset, nausea, diarrhea, fainting, vomiting, dark stools, constipation, metallic taste, staining of teeth. How do we bypass all of this? So I'm, I want to introduce to you Vitcofol HB, which is a result of a lot of technology, a lot of innovation, and it contains sun active FE, which is the microsomal iron. So the microsomal technology, advanced microsomal iron is a, what I want you to remember. And it's this microsomal iron in Vitcofol HB that does all the magic. <clears throat> well, how does it work? So primarily, there are four main things that I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to cover that right now, right away, and then we'll go into detail for each of them. The first of all, it's the most highly micronized iron, the smallest particle size available of any iron. The second is because of its micronization and because of its special microsomal iron technology, where it's encapsulated with a special coating, it makes it go through different cell types called the microsomal cells, the M cells, the microfold cells. The third is it's got unparalleled safety. It's recommended by the WHO. And the fourth, of course, is the efficacy. And I will show you a clinical trial in pregnant women as well. So these are the four points I want you to take away with you for Vitcofol HB powered by Sun Active FE. So, of course, uh, the Vitcofol HB label claim is ferric pyrophosphate, the micronized ferric pyrophosphate, which is the iron component, the elemental iron of 30 milligrams, along with folic acid of 250 micrograms. So what do I mean by microsomal? Well, first of all, Vitcofol HB has got the smallest particle size of any oral iron you will find. There are many people out there on the market that will come and say, hey, we also have ferric pyrophosphate, but all ferric pyrophosphate is not the same. Commercially available ferric pyrophosphate, as you can see in this published graph, is around 5.2 microns in size. Sun Active FE or Vitcofol HB, is 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns. So more than 15 times smaller than commercially available ferric pyrophosphate. And in fact, other encapsulated ions, whether it's liposomal iron or any other encapsulated ferric pyrophosphate, all have particle sizes greater than seven microns. So comparatively, they're huge. Why does this matter? Well, it has been shown, a lot of papers have been published that the smaller your particle size, the better your absorption, the better your efficacy. Right, so we've got 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns, and not only that. I will jump into the mechanism of how this iron works, and you will see why the particle size plays such an important role. So this has also been proven. If you look at the bioavailability data, Vitcofol HB has bioavailability that's more than two times that of ferrous sulfate, commercially available ferric pyrophosphate, ferrous fumarate, ferrous, uh, ferrous lactate, electrolytic iron or lipofer, which is another liposomal iron that's available on the market. So you can see that this is far more uh, superior than any other iron you'll find. If you even look at the RAD studies for bioavailability, the area under the curve, under this pink line, which is Vitcofol HB, is the absolute highest. So all in all, <clears throat> you can see that it's probably the most superior iron you're going to find orally. How does this work? Why does this work so well? Well, all your other oral ions will go through the enterocytes or the intestinal epithelial cells. Vitcofol HB, which is powered by Sun Active, is going to go through a different kind of cell type. It's these white colored cells, which are called M cells, microfold cells of the intestine. What are microfold cells and what do they do? Well, their function is to eat up bacteria, viruses, and small lipid particles. So again, because of that size that I was telling you, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns, <clears throat> and because of the special microsomal iron technology coating, it tricks the body into believing, it tricks the M cells into believing that it needs to eat it. What's the advantage? Well, when the particles are eaten up by the M cells, when they're endocytosed, first of all, you get over the rate limiting step of the enterocytes of DMT1 that I showed you. And secondly, it goes right through the cells, goes to the phagocytes, gets eaten up by the phagocytes and ends up going to the lymphatic system. 
So the iron that you take will bypass your intestinal epithelia, will go through the M cells in the intestine, will go through the lymphatic system, the lymphatic torrent, and will end up in the liver. In the liver, it gets uncovered and it binds to transferrin. Ferric pyrophosphate has got the highest affinity for transferrin out of all iron. So we basically completely bypass the rate limiting step and we've made it incredibly efficacious. So this is something important to remember about Bitcofol HP. Additionally, here's the other piece of data that I have for you in terms of particle size. So this is something that has been published extensively. Microfold cells, the M cells of the intestine, it has been shown that their ideal and optimal size of transport, for them to eat something and to transport it, it should be one micron or less, right? If it's between one and five microns, it might go through the M cells, but it will get stuck below that in the Peyer's patch. And if it's greater than five microns, it won't even go through the M cells. It'll just go in there and get stuck. So the fact that Witkofol HB is 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns in size means all of this goes through. Whereas any other iron that you have, they're all going to be any other oral iron. So if anyone else comes and tells you, we've got liposomal iron, we've got coated iron, encapsulated iron, ask them what is the particle size of the ferric pyrophosphate. If it's not 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, it is going to get stuck in the M cells or below the M cells, but it will not go through and you will not get the effect. Right? Most others are 7 to 13 microns in size. So you don't have to take my word for it. I have got clinical data. I have got published papers that show this. So there was a paper that was published in Frontiers in Microbiology. This was published in 2017. And they tested two sun active products, which is Bitcofol HB. And what they found, and I quote, that both these products were primarily determined to be transported by microfold cells through the intestinal epithelium. So here it is, it's published and it shows that not only is this theoretically proven, but it also has been clinically proven to go through the M cells, the microfold cells. So a lot of other people want to postulate and show that they might be going through it, but we've got the evidence. Additionally, so how does this help? Now I have shown you that the microsomal iron technology of Witkofol HB means that you've got the smallest particle size, it's highly micronized. It also goes through microsomal microfold cells. So these are the two things I have shown you. Well, how does that really affect in terms of safety and efficacy? So let's talk about safety. Witkofol HB is probably the safest oral iron you're going to find. It has got unparalleled safety studies. In fact, it has been recommended by the WHO in its gazette, the Guidelines on Food Fortification with Micronutrients. In this gazette, they very clearly state that just as the bioavailability increases as you reduce the size, so that's the first thing they say, reduce the, the size, increase the bioavailability. The second thing they say, a micronized form of ferric pyrophosphate, 0 0.5 microns, which of course is Bitcofol HB, and how that increases the absorption of iron by two to four fold in humans. In fact, they say in milk products, and normally we never give iron and milk together, but here is an iron that you can. But that's a little bit of a digression. The point is, they very clearly say, and they cite in the citation, Bitcofol HB, and how it increases the absorption of iron two to four fold. So not just that, we've also got a lot of studies on gastric tolerance. So here was a rat study that was done. And in this study, rats were given acute doses of Witkofol HB, Sunactive FE. And what they found was they were either given Witkofol HB, commercial ferric pyrophosphate, sodium ferrous citrate. And they looked at all the different iron forms and they looked at the effect on the intestine. So if the rats had any sort of hemorrhaging, then they got an index of one. If they had a small ulcer, they got an index of two. If they had a large ulcer, they got an index of three. All the other ions give some sort of irritability, either a certain amount of hemorrhaging or, an, or some sort of ulceration. Sunactive FE, Witkofol HB was the only one that gave an index of zero, really pointing out its absolute safety. Additionally, we've also got data, of course, we've got Ames mutagenesis data, we've got acute toxicity data, we've got microsome plate, plate test data. If you look at the acute toxicity, the number's extremely high. It's 635 milligrams per kg, whereas the dose that we recommend is 30 milligrams per day. So we're nowhere close to it. It's a very safe, safe uh, product. 
And in fact, uh, if you look through the safety studies, a lot of these have been proven, a lot of these have been shown. So then let's move on to the next part. And most importantly, let's talk about the efficacy, the clinical efficacy and how important this is. So there are more than eight clinical trials. In fact, there was a ninth study that just came out a week ago. Um, and so more than nine published human clinical trials, zero adverse events reported. This has been done all over the world. There's a study in Switzerland, in Italy, in Germany, in India as well, the Philippines, Japan, and Mexico. I'm gonna quickly run us through a lot of these studies. Some of these are done in pregnant women. I will show you the pregnant women's study first because I think that would interest this audience the most. Uh, I'm also gonna show you the studies that have been done all over the world. Many have been done in food fortification, so I'll show you those as well. So let's start off with the Italian study, which is in pregnant women. This was published last year, uh, rather in 2018, this paper was published. It was done in Italy, and they looked at Sun Active FE, or of course, Vitcofol HB. And what I want you to take home, what I want you to remember very importantly, in 30 days, they used 30 milligrams. So 30 milligrams used for 30 days in second trimester pregnant women. 50 women in their second trimester were either given Vitcofol HB or they were given ferrous gluconate. And in 30 days with 30 milligrams, you get an increase in 1.7 gram per deciliter. This is unheard of. 1.7 gram per deciliter increase in hemoglobin in 30 days with an oral iron with zero side effects. So this was pretty amazing. To put this in context a little bit, if you, we did a meta-analysis, and if you compare this, this is against Indian data. So it was compared against Indian pregnant women, pregnant Indian women in their second trimester, who were given either ferrous sulfate, 100 milligrams, ferrous fumarate, 100 milligrams, ferrous ascorbate, 100 milligrams, ferrous bisglycinate, 30 milligrams, or ferrous ferritidate, 33 milligrams. And if you look at this, those results range from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 gram per deciliter increase in 30 days. Whereas Vitcofol HB, Sun Active FE, gives 1.7, three times the increase in hemoglobin in 30 days without any of the side effects. So if you ask me, I would say this is the complete gold standard to meet. Well, additionally, we've also got other studies. Here was a study that was done in India. This was done in children. So I'm going to show you studies now that were done in women and children. Uh, so this was the study that was done in children who were given sprinkles. This is quite a big study. The N was 432. So 432 Indian infants were given 20 milligrams of elemental iron of Sun Active FE, Vitcofol HB, and they saw 1.2 gram per deciliter increase in a period of two months. Similarly, there was another study that was done in Jap Japan and Germany. These are now food fortification studies. So you will see that the dose goes down a lot. The first study in pregnant women was done with capsules and they were given 30 milligrams of elemental iron. This study, they gave only 3.5 milligrams of elemental iron, so one-tenth the dose. Uh, and yet, you see an increase. Within two months, you see an increase in 0 0.7 gram per deciliter and 0 0.5 gram per deciliter in women in Japan as well as Germany. So you're seeing this across populations, regardless of the continent, regardless of the country, and even in a very small dose. That's how efficacious this iron is. Similarly, this study was done in the Philippines where they looked at children whose fruit juice was fortified with Vitcofol HP. And what you find is the, the prevalence of anemia, which is at 100% in these children, goes down to just 13%. So you've got an 87% reduction in anemia in these children in two and a half months. Uh, and they were given just 2.6 milligrams a day. So, of course, you also see a corresponding increase in hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin's also gone up by 1.25 gram per deciliter, which is 2.6 milligrams a day. Here's one more study looking at school children in the Philippines. Now, this study was done in the Philippines because the school children there are a very at-risk population. So if you see in the control, which I'll show you on the next slide, uh, the control also, the anemia is at 63%, and it remains there at the end of this study. Whereas in the group that was given <clears throat> the Vitcofol HB, you see the 10 milligrams of Vitcofol HB reduces the anemia drastically. And in fact, here's the hemoglobin numbers. And you'll see that the hemoglobin in the control group goes down by two points. 
So from 8.6 gram per deciliter to 6.5 gram per deciliter. Whereas in the group that was given with Crofol HB, it goes up by 0.78 gram per deciliter. And the final study I want to talk about, of course, is uh, the group that did it in Mexico, where again, it's an, another food fortification study. And 13 milligrams of Witcofol HB reduces the anemia almost completely in 145 women. So all in all, I have shown you studies in pregnant women. I have shown you studies in children. I have shown you studies in normal women, uh, rather anemic, non-pregnant women. And in every single case, you see that Witcofol HB, the four points I really want to bring out before I move to the next part of this talk, the four major points I want to bring out to you is a lot of innovation and technology has gone into this. Uh, the innovation has gone into micronizing this, so it's the smallest particle size of oral iron you will find, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns in size. It has also got a proprietary phenomenal encapsulation, which means that it goes through the microfold cells, the M cells of the intestine. Additionally, it's completely safe, no side effects, and is recommended by the WHO. And the fourth point, really, really important, especially for clinicians, is the efficacy. 1.7 gram per deciliter increase in hemoglobin in 30 days only with 30 milligrams of elemental iron. So that's what I want you all to take home with you all. In the meanwhile, I'm going to jump to the next part of this talk. Very, very, very interesting. <clears throat> Something that's become very relevant in the last two months. Let's talk about the importance of iron and immunity and how this how Witcofol HB is the missing puzzle in iron and immunity. So the outline for this part of the talk, I'm first going to talk to you about is iron important for immune health and what is the data and the evidence we have. Let's talk about COVID because it's here, it's now, it's everywhere. So we'll talk about COVID and what COVID does in the immune system. We'll talk about COVID and how it might mimic hepcidin. And because it mimics hepcidin, you're going going to get a reduction in iron in your body, why conventional iron will not help, and why Witcofol HB is the right solution for this. So I'm going to go through all of this, and then, of course, we'll have time to take some questions, and we'll do that. So first of all, let's talk about immune health in India. Very importantly, we're a pretty at-risk country. If you look at the data, here was a study that had come out from the government right now in 2020 that says 20% Indians suffer from low immunity. Not just that, 62% Indians of the entire country are at high risk or borderline high risk for low immunity and ill health, being unhealthy. So is iron important? Well, it turns out there is a lot of data that says iron is extremely important for immune health. Iron homeostasis is very, very important. If your iron homeostasis is not proper, you will not be able to respond to invaders. You will not be able to respond to infections. You will not be able to respond to inflammation. So what are the different things that iron does? Well, it plays a role in cytokine production, plays a role in T-cell and B-cell maturation. It plays a role in oxidative generating enzymes like myeloperoxidase. All of these are very important for killing pathogens. So let me show you some of the papers that talk about this. This is directly related to COVID and very important right now. So if you look at some of the publications, there are some papers that say very clearly that iron plays a role in T-cell development as well as autoimmunity. There's also data that it plays a role in B-cell development, proliferation, and maturation. Here's another paper that talks about the lymphocyte response. And people that are iron deficient anemic, uh, they have a reduced response, a reduced lymphocyte response compared to non-anemic patients. So if you look at the entire spoke over here that I'm showing you, it's everything from reduced neutrophil function to impaired bactericidal activity, depression of T lymphocytes, defective T lymphocytes and reduced proliferation, impaired natural killer cell activity, uh, reduced IL-2 interleukin production, reduced macrophage production. So you're seeing an entire range of immune deficiency that correlates very clearly with iron deficiency anemia. Well, do I have data, some more data on iron deficiency anemia? Yes. I'm going to show you four studies. The first three are going to be correlative. The fourth study is very causative, which really puts the nail on the, on the coffin that says that, yes, iron is important for immune health. So here's the first study, which looks at children. And in children that are immune deficient, uh, iron deficient, excuse me, in children that have iron deficiency anemia, you see a reduction in immune function. 
they produce less IgG4, so less immunoglobulin has been produced con compared to the control, significantly less. Not just that, you all see, also see a reduction in oxidative burst in neutrophils. You see a reduction in neutrophils with phagocytic activity. So your neutrophils are completely impaired. Additionally, you also see monocytes, and monocytes are also impaired, less phagocytic activity, less oxidative burst. Here's the second study. Very similarly now, you see this again in children. You're looking at the CD4 and CD8 ratio. Well, the CD4 to CD8 ratio is completely impaired. So your CD4 percentage, CD8 percentage, both is down significantly in children with iron deficiency anemia. Additionally, the counts of CD3 and CD4 cells goes down drastically in children with iron deficiency anemia. And in this third study I wanna show you, it's not just to children, but you also see this in women. So you also see this in elderly women. And in elderly women, if they're iron deficient, their lymphocyte proliferation has gone down drastically. Their oxidative burst potential also goes down very significantly. And finally, I wanna talk about the study that is completely causative, which proves the case here. In this study, they had a cohort of healthy children, they had a cohort of anemic children. They tested the anemic children and their CD4 to CD8 ratio was down drastically. So their CD4 cells are completely down. Well, they gave these anemic children iron. And when their hemoglobin levels were the same as the healthy controls, you see that correspondingly, their CD4 to CD8 ratio has gone up and their CD4 numbers have gone up as well. So this completely proves the case for me. So... Hopefully, till now, I have established that iron is very important for immune health. Okay, noted. So let's see, why are we talking about this right now? Well, in fact, to be very honest, two days ago or three days ago, when I sat down to work on the numbers to now, the numbers have jumped up even more, right? This slide is already obsolete. So in Maharashtra alone, we've got, I mean, last I checked, there were 16,000 cases last night. There were 76 uh, 1,000 cases in India just yesterday. We've now crossed lakhs and lakhs. Yes, we were the third highest, most affected country. But the point is right now, some reports say we are the most highest in COVID cases. Some say the US is still ahead, so we're number two. But the point is it's not a joke. Odds are everyone on this call already knows of someone that's COVID positive. So we're in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, we're now turning into the epicenter of the pandemic. What do we do to make things better? Why am I talking about COVID? Well, there's a very clear, a lot of reports that are talking about this. There's one study that came out in the New York Times. There was a news article that came out a few weeks ago that spoke about how COVID short circuits the immune system. And very importantly, it talks about T cells and how T cells are so important. The reason why children don't quite have the manifestations of COVID that are so bad is because their T cell populations are high, their thymus glands are functioning really well, and this goes down as you get older and older and older. So that's one, <clears throat> excuse me. The second is COVID also seems to affect T cell function. Here's another report that came out in Bloomberg, which talks about the importance of a T cell response. In fact, the Oxford vaccine, uh, which just got cleared with their phase two, if you looked at their phase two results, they did two things. One was they looked to see our antibodies being produced. But they say more importantly, they look to see if there is a T cell response. So like I told you, if your iron levels are deficient, your T cell response is going to be deficient. So this really proves to me that taking iron as a precaution or making sure that you're not anemic in the current climate is really going to help you ward off and fight off COVID as well. Again, don't take my word for it. Let's talk about the clinical studies. So here's a study. This was done in Wuhan. Uh, obviously done just two months ago. And what they found is decreased T cell populations add to the severity, increase the severity of COVID-19. Here's another study that very clearly in Wuhan said that the number of people that were anemic had a much higher non-survival ratio. So the non-survival ratio for anemic patients was 26%, much higher than those who were non-anemic, which is 11 and this is in Wuhan, which really was the biggest hotspot at the time. Also, the cytokine storm, which is the hallmark of COVID, right? When you have COVID, you have a lot of lung infiltration. The infiltrates are primarily cytokines. Well, it's thought to be that if your hepcidin levels go up, your cytokine levels go up. If your iron level goes down, your cytokine levels go up as well. 
Now, why am I talking about hepcidin? So this is the next part of the talk that I want to talk to you about. Hepcidin right now is very important because multiple studies have now said that COVID-19, the spike protein on COVID-19 by which it enters the cells mimics hepcidin. And here are some of the papers. Very clearly they say that COVID-19 mimics hepcidin action. The spike protein is very similar to, to it. So sequence wise, it's similar. Functionally wise, it is also mimicking it. <clears throat> and why is this important? Well, like I had shown you all the way in the start, if your hepcidin levels go up, what happens is no matter how much iron you take orally and no matter how much iron gets absorbed by the enterocytes, it will get stuck in the intestinal enterocytes. It will never come out from the bottom, from ferroportin. It gets completely blocked and your iron will never leave. In fact, it will keep building up in the intestinal epithelial cells. They will get toxic. They will get shed. They will die. And so no matter how much iron you take, your ferritin levels will also go up, but you'll, you won't see the increase in hemoglobin. And in fact, latest reports from the last two days are also talking about COVID patients having a cell. So actually, it becomes the ideal iron to take during times of COVID. Because regardless of whether you have it or you don't have it, regardless of whether hepcidin is there or not, your iron and hemoglobin levels will go up. Again, because it goes through the microfold cells into the lymphatic system to the liver, completely bypasses the intestinal enterocytes. So the point I really want to make is iron <clears throat> is extremely important for immune health. Having high or rather not being iron deficient anemic is also very important for immune health. And Vitcofol HB, which is powered by Sun Active FE, is the perfect iron for it because it bypasses the action of hepcidin and goes through the M cells. So that's what I wanted to show you. And <clears throat> of course, I'm going to end by telling you that technology is a great friend and not a foe. And we here at Generex use that. And we have great partners like FTC who harness technology as well. So with that, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take some questions. Uh, I hope people have put in questions into the sheet so that I can take them and I can answer them. So I'm just going to see some of the questions. Lovely. We've had some questions that have come in. So I'm just going to answer some of the questions that have come. <clears throat> so the first question I'm seeing here is... Um, what is the size of the iron particle? I've already answered this, that the, the size of the particle is 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns. Uh, and the second question that I have got is, how does this compare to other iron sizes? Well, it's absolutely the smallest that you're going to find. Most other iron is around 7 to 13 microns in size, and the size makes a huge difference. Um, the next question is, what time and when can Vitcofol HP be taken? Well, the truth is, given that it goes through a complete, there are no side effects, it goes through a mechanism that's completely different from what you, your canonical iron mechanism is. You can take it with your meal, you can take it on its own, you can even take it with milk. But I would recommend to all the doctors here that you should continue giving it the way your patients are most used to taking it. So if you normally prescribe it with a meal, you should do that. Because obviously this iron has also been used in food fortification, so it doesn't get caught in any sort of food matrix, uh, and it works very well. The next question I have got is, what can I speak <clears throat> about oxidation and discoloration? That's a great question, because <clears throat> what we see is the properties of this iron. It is something that you can heat up to 121 degrees Celsius, and you can do that for eight hours, and it still doesn't separate. The encapsulation doesn't separate from the iron. In fact, it's one that you can add in water, you can add in milk also, and it won't get discolored, it won't get oxidized. So that's something that's pretty unheard of, but speaks to the, the robustness of this product completely. Uh, how does this iron compare to ferrous ascorbate and ferrous sulfate is the next question. Well, like I showed you in the meta-analysis, ferrous ascorbate in pregnant women gives you a rise in hemoglobin of about 0 0.6 gram per deciliter. Whereas, Vitcofol HP gives you a threefold rise 
in the same amount of time in 30 days gives you a threefold rise of 1.7 gram per deciliter increase. Similarly, we see very similar numbers with ferrous sulfate as well. And the point to remember is that additionally, ferrous ascorbate and ferrous sulfate both have pretty significant gastric side effects, whereas Vitco FolHP has none. Uh, so I think that is all the questions uh, that I am seeing right now on, on the questionnaire. So thanks so much, everyone, for your time. And uh, back to you. Thank you, FDC team, for having me. And over to you again. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for such a wonderful session on this uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, you have really opened our eyes and given us a new perspective, specifically in this uh, pandemic uh, pe uh, period, and how I can effectively help uh, and specifically the patients who are suffering from COVID and uh, they're having some anemic conditions. So they're also, uh, with Kofal HB, can really play a pivotal role. So thank you so much, uh, doctor, and everyone uh, who participated. And thank you so much. Yeah, bye-bye.